Yo, ho, 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 ho. Welcome back to the channel, boys and girls. Today is officially Velo Build Day because my Velo Build VBR 268 frame set build is finally complete. So, of course, we're going to go over uh, the specs, some of my thoughts on the build, and then, of course, we will take this bike out on the road so I can give you some of my first initial thoughts on this bike. $500, not a bad deal. So without further ado, let's get cracking. Bro, look at my drip, man. Look at my drip. I got all the sponsors. I'm out here looking like a, a privateer. Got the Met helmet, man. Your boy Patty's probably the most stylish looking dude in all of Chicago. Uh, now, we are in the middle of April. It's about 66 degrees, uh, which means summertime shy is almost here, guys. We are almost back to summertime. And you know the best part about summertime in Chicago is avoiding all of the gunshots and gang violence because all you guys whenever i bring up chicago it's like oh my god are you worried about getting shot like bro we're not out here chasing strays or ducking strays whatever you want to call it chicago is not that dangerous you basically have to go so far out of your way to find any sort of violence and criminal activity and if you want to know about that uh drop it in the i'm just kidding don't drop that in the comments i'm not gonna let you know that anyway let's take a look at my awesome Velo build 268 frame set all right so Bro, look at that, man. That's looking, looking sexy. Let me just adjust this. All right, that looking sexy, right? Look at the, just look at the, uh, the saddle to bar height drop on that. It looks really, really good, right, guys? All right. So anyway, let's first talk about these wheels, uh, because this particular brand, they have been pestering me for the last two months, telling me, when are you gonna make an update video? I'm gonna get to it when I get to it. It's been cold in Chicago, but we got these uh, knee pest Maui 45 wheels. We got 45 millimeters uh, depth. Um, as far as the rims goes, carbon spokes, ceramic bearings. Um, we have the uh, Star Ratchet style design on the hubs. Uh, I believe they are 54 tooth, uh, 21 millimeters uh, internal, 28 millimeter external, and they are paired to a set of Continental GP5000 28 with uh, TPU inner tubes. TPU inner tubes, as you guys know, you'll save about 100 grams over latex or butyl tubes. I like them, lightweight, they work really, really well. Uh, now my frame set is a size large or size 56. Um, very, very uh, comfortable. Whoops, this is kind of ghetto. I gotta put that back down. Anyway, all right, so that's that. So um, I've already reviewed this saddle um, under one of the, the cheapest saddles that I've reviewed. It's like 70 bucks, 3D printed, uh, short nose, very, very comfortable. And it comes in at less than 200 grams. Uh, next up, let's talk about the drivetrain. So the drivetrain, as you guys see, we are rocking a uh, SRAM Force ETEP one by Here in Chicago, it's very, very flat. And I do have plenty of other bikes that run two by if I ever, ever need the actual extra gears that come with the two by setup. Uh, now the chain ring is by PassQuest. You can get the from AliExpress. Um, it's probably like maybe 35, 40 bucks. 50 tooth in the front. Uh, paired to a uh, cork slash SRAM uh, spider based power meter. The cranks are 170. Um, now, I did my first road race of the season, uh, probably about a week or so at the time of this filming, and I used uh, 170 uh, crank arms, and I found this thing very comfortable, especially when you are in the arrow slash drop position, very comfortable. So I'm gonna uh, keep rocking the 170 versus the 172.5 and see how they go this summer. But the first time I've used them, or the first few times, I like it a lot. Uh, now the cassette out back is a SRAM Force uh, 10 to 28 uh, cassette. Like I said, very, very flat area. So I don't need a lot of uh, bailout gears. Um, next up, let's talk about this uh, Nova Ride slash Nova to Ride oversized uh, pulley wheel uh, system. Uh, thank you to Nova Ride for sending this out to me to uh, review. Um, setting this up on the SRAM Force uh, rear derailleur was a little bit more finicky and cumbersome than setting it up on uh, a Shimano rear derailleur, but nonetheless, um, they have pretty easy to follow instructions online and on YouTube. Uh, now the chain, uh, this is from a Cyclo, Cyclo Works, Cyclowax, Cyclowax, I'm sorry, Cyclowax. Um, so I've done a re review on them already. Um, I've pretty much moved all my bikes over to the hot wax chain method. And on Cyclowax, you can actually purchase a pre-wax chain um, just to kind of get everything started. So. The good thing about um, going with a pre-wax chain from Cyclowax is uh, you don't have to worry about all the degreasing, all the other stuff. You pretty much are set to go as far as waxing moving forward. It's a little bit pricey, but once you do that and you 
everything is set up on the wax. Um, as simple as easy as adding a little bit of hot uh, water to clean the chain um, to reapply uh, the hot wax. Uh, look, Keo Blade uh, Carbon Ceramic Petals. I like these uh, a lot. Um, I'm using this new bar tape. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Uh, Arundel, Arundel, who knows? I don't know. Very, very comfortable. Actually more comfortable and more damping properties than Supercast bar tape. I thought that I would be a Supercast fan for life, but unfortunately I might actually prefer these over Supercast um, goes. But overall, that's, that's basically the whole um, build itself, guys. I think I went over all of the important uh, aspects of it. Um, I didn't talk about weight. So um, if you are weighing, you know, without the power meter, without the bottle cage, without the garment mount, you're looking at probably about maybe 7.2, 7.1, 7 7.2 kilograms. And then all in with everything, you're looking at like 7.5, 7.6. So for a complete bike at this frame set, that's really, really good. I mean, we're talking about a $500 frame set. And of course we have this silver chameleon sparkle effect, which uh, the paint quality, uh, Visually, it looks good. We'll see how it actually holds up to the abuse of uh, road riding in the summertime. But for um, a complete bike, um, granted, some of these components are on the pricier side, let's be honest. But as a complete bike, the bike looks really, really good. It's, it's, uh, it's understated as far as the design and geometry goes. And then as soon as the sun hits it, which is what you guys can see right now, that's when the paint really really sparkles. But I've really enjoyed uh, this bike uh, so far and I am looking forward to getting more miles on this complete bike in the summertime. Now, uh, when it came to building up this frame set, um, it was very straightforward. Um, honestly, there really is not a lot to report about it. Um, the one area that I will point to um, is when it came time to aligning the uh, rear caliper to the rotors. Um, the rear caliper mounts, um, they were not faced that well. So it did take me about maybe like 30, 30, 40 minutes to be able to align that rotor to the caliper. Um, now the front one, the front one was no problem at all. So good job available on that front. And again, it's a $500. Um, now, I'm not making concessions for the fact that this is a $500 uh, frame set. I mean, I've, I've had these little quirks even with more expensive uh, frame sets, but it is something to note. Um, you know, when you're dealing with the $500 frame, there are limitations to what they're doing and these uh, frames are you know manufactured to a price point um so just keep that in mind um now uh, also too uh with the uh, the seat posts uh for my weight um i haven't had any problems thus far on this ride with the seat posts um sliding down i've been able to torque it to a reasonable uh, amount of torque like five newton meters and i haven't had any issues with that um there is a little bit of creaking and i'm not sure where the creaking is coming from so i will have to troubleshoot that um this is kind of what these shakeout rides are for it could be either the the saddle because i am using a uh, seven by nine carbon rails and maybe the included uh, carbon rail mounts uh, for the seat post available included. Maybe it's just not perfectly seated with those carbon rails. I don't know. It could be the bottom bracket, which by the way, um, for this, the, the bottom bracket I'm using, um, it is courtesy of Panda Podium, <laughs> as you guys can see. Uh, Panda Podium, uh, it's the, the Cybri, is that how you pronounce it? Cybri. Um, it's a ceramic bottom bracket. It's the uh, BB86 for dub slash um, SRAM uh, drive trains. But all in all, the whole entire build was very straightforward. Um, routing the cables through the integrated cockpit was no problem at all. Um, and just the overall fit and finish visually, outside of that rear caliper mount, everything was A-OK. -okay. And that is actually especially considering the price point. All right, and we are riding the Velo Build 268 frame set. Uh, so let's do some housekeeping really quickly. So this frame set is $500, guys. That includes the headset bearings, the handlebars, etc. Now, if you are a new customer, and if you are expecting a $500 frame to compete with a $1,000 or $1,200 frame set, this is not it. Now, does that mean that a $500 frame is going to be completely awful and just straight up rubbish? That's not the case either. So I think it's very important to set the expectations. If you're looking for a frame set to compete with like a Windspace or a Yolio, this is not going to be it. But I think in terms of other affordable frame sets on the market, especially for the $500 price point, I think that this Velo Build 268 uh, is a really great option. So the main question that I had uh, with this uh, brand new 268 frame set is how does it feel uh, in comparison and with respect to Velo Build's uh, previous frame sets, namely the 168 and the 177. 
and I do believe, uh, again, this is just first ride, so you know how these first rides go. Um, I think that Velobuild did do a good job of blending those two bikes together. Um, it is uh, stiffer than my particular copy of the 168, um, while also being almost as lightweight as the 177. Uh, but the good thing with the 268 versus the 177 is this frame set is a little bit more aerodynamic, at least in its design properties. So if you are on the fence between the 168 and the uh, 177, I think that this is gonna be a good option. Now in the stiffness department, hey yo, that was crazy. Uh, when it comes to stiffness, uh, is this frame set stiff? Um, yeah, it's fine, it's, it's stiff enough I would say. Uh, it's definitely stiffer than the 168. And I would say at this price point, uh, the measure of uh, stiffness, <laughs> I've used stiffness way too many times in this video. It's perfectly fine. Now moving on to the ride dynamics and overall sensation. Uh, it definitely feels just a tad bit more refined than VeloBuild's uh, previous frame sets. Uh, if you look at the specs on the website, um, if you do believe that they're using uh, Torre 1000 carbon and all that other jazz, yeah, the ride quality is, is a bit more refined. And I do have to stress that it's more refined with respects to the price point. Um, and the reason why I keep bringing this up is because at this point I've been reviewing these budget frames for a while and I do get a lot of questions of people who are, you know, they're really expecting a $500 frame set to compete with something more expensive. And it doesn't mean that this frame is, is bad by any respect. It's, I think it's really, really good. And if you're looking for um, a project bike to build yourself, if you are on a budget or you just don't want to spend a lot of money, I think that Velo Build is a good place to start uh, your search for a competitive frame set uh, within its price point. One thing I do appreciate from Velo Build and just their overall uh, ethos when it comes to customer service is it seems like they do make an effort uh, to listen to their customers. I spoke about this um, on the unboxing of this frame set, but unlike some of the uh, other options in this price point, uh, Velo Build seems to constantly be making improvements to their customer service. Uh, their consideration to introducing new frame sets. And I think as of right now in 2024, uh, this is probably one of the best frames you can get for the price point. And it's all because of VeloBuild's hard work or effort to constantly improve uh, with respect to their budget. Yay! Your boy Patty is mad popular in these streets, boy. You better talk to him. All right, but I digress. But yeah, VeloBuild has done a really good job listening to their customers. And so far, they're, they seem to be constantly making splashes uh, in the marketplace. Uh, with respect to my geometry, uh, the geometry on this is basically identical to a Tarmac SO7 uh, or even my Specialized LA Sprint. So I did my best to try to mirror my bike setup on this bike, the 268, to those bikes um, because I think that would at least give me the best uh, opportunity to test out the overall ride handling. Uh, now again, not to compare this frame set with those, but no, uh, this 268 does not ride like my LA Sprint. Um, it's not as responsive, but it's it's responsive enough. So I think my overall first rise impressions on this Velo build is, is this some sort of miracle frame set for $500? No. Is it a good value uh, with respects to the price point? Uh, yes. Are there other options on the market at this price point? Uh, yes. But the, the thing that Velo has going for itself is uh, their customer service uh, has improved. Um, if there are issues that do arise and it's something that Velo can fix, they will make uh, at least a considerable amount of effort to uh, fix that. And for $500, it's pretty much a no-brainer if you are interested in getting into the budget bike build uh, world. There's a lot of great resources online right now. And as I've always said over these last few years, I'm just happy that we are even at a place where you can spend $500 on a frame set and be able to get something decent enough that's not going to drop you on any coffee rides. It's not going to hold you back, maybe until you get to the absolute limits, but something that you can have a lot of fun with, custom paint. I mean, my paint color is absolutely sick and you get something that's very personalized, all for $500. So. That's gonna wrap up today's video, guys. Um, a huge shout out once again to VeloBuild for sending out this frame set for me to test out. And of course, I will have a longer term review uh, during the upcoming months. So as always, questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave them down below. And I'll check you guys on the next one. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. Peace.